Hey guys, what's happening? So, I just got one of these uh, Mach 3 controllers in. NVCM. Uh, I already have a couple, I mean I have actually quite a few of these Mach 3 controllers. Um, here's the other one I have, it's NVEM. This is the Ethernet version of it. But, um, for some reason this thing actually didn't come, it was supposed to be 6 axis and it didn't come to 6 axis, it was 3 axis. Um, so I'm messing with 5 axis. I mean obviously uh, USB is not the really preferred method. For doing Mach 3, um, just because you can actually pick up a lot of noise, and it's not as reliable as Ethernet, but this was 55 bucks on eBay. Uh, I mean, the good thing is the it did come with a USB cable, and there was two ferrites on it. And those little ferrites, what they do is they block noise from coming into the controller. So um, a lot of times these 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 USB cables will act as an antenna, you know, picking up EMI, um, electrical magnetic interference, and uh, but the ferrites will actually block it out before it enters your board. You know, because when you're dealing with like precise steps and motion control, you know, I mean, this 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 noise can can mess up your uh, controls, especially your uh, if you're using any sort of encoder, it can mess up your encoders. But um, I'm going to take off the cover here so we can compare the PCBs. Uh, then I'll fire it up in Mach 3. And well, actually, I want to get it to work. I have this totally mocked up. You know, going with the uh, MPG. NV. This is another product from Nova Sun, and then I have a probe, and then a one stepper, just as a mock-up. You got me going into this CNC machine right here. Uh, maybe I, I don't think if you actually seen it like this before, uh, totally built up like this. But I do actually have. Uh, I'm going to parallel port one in there right now, if you can see it, and then I'm doing five axis. So that's the five, uh, three Nemo 24s and uh, two Nemo 23s. Actually, I have an EC500, the most latest version of the Ethernet version of their NovaSense product. Um, uh, but I can't get it in China. I mean, it's, uh, I've already ordered four different... There's, their, their companies are selling them. I'm buying them on AliExpress, but then they can't. They won't ship them. It's like they're all selling the same products. But, you know, once you buy, you give them the money, then they say, okay, come back ten days later and say, uh, yeah, we can't get it from the manufacturer, so... They're selling a product that they can't get, but it's just not just one store. It's, it's four different stores, and every single time I have to wait 10 days before they tell me I can't get it. They can't get it. So it's been pretty kind of frustrating. It's been over a month. I've been actually trying to buy one for over a month. Well, one of the cool things is that are the pinouts are almost exactly the same. Inputs, power is a different spot. Um, so this actually has an external UART. Um, the cool thing is the MPG actually has a dedicated... 15 uh, db15 mpg so it's running an st micro stm micro 32-bit arm processor and that's actually what translates the uh the usb signal into a uh, parallel port like mach 3 wants to send a parallel port so you're kind of tricking mach 3 you know and, it, and this will translate into like a parallel port signal um so you have a bunch of uh these are your inputs right here these are opto couplers right here so opto isolated you heard that term before it's basically like having a tv remote you're not, you're, you're, you have two physical circuits, you're totally separated electronically. That's why when you see this right here, right? At least on, on this actual brand of board, the NovaSun stuff. Uh, like when you see a ground port, that's actually not a ground out, it's a ground in. You have to, you have to supply ground into these ports. Um, or you, these, these things actually, because what happens is, it's called an open, uh, what's it called, open open loop uh, ground or open collector. So you have to provide it a ground, uh, actual power wire from the ground. And then these will actually be ground triggered. But these won't operate unless you run a ground wire. So it took me a while to figure that out on this, on the NVMe. But uh, outputs are uh, DB15. Um, the cool thing about this one, at least, it has the, the pins here. But I don't need a lot of outputs for this thing, so I think I should be able to get away with there's four output outputs right here. The S axis S axis is really for the spindle. But what's weird is they have uh, two uh, four uh, outputs. So typically you'd use two for forward and reverse, and then you have like a, like a pulse width modulated spindle, zero to ten volt. But uh, closer look. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm guessing this is the, uh, so on this one here, I've been messing around with Linux CNC, and this is actually an ST, ST link, and actually I'm able to program the firmware. I'm basically programming this thing right here. So, these are actually almost like a system on chip uh, operating system. 
you know, has its own memory, its own, uh, you know, CPU, obviously ARM processor, its own uh, flash memory too. So you can actually, fl there's flash storage on this chip. So but that's actually where the operating system is loaded. But the cool thing is this actually has these pinners. I'm, I'm assuming this is what this is for. These little headers. Um, this better be 6-axis because, I, I, I mean, that's going to piss me off if it's not 6-axis. So w the thing about Novasun, what I noticed, is that what they do is the hardware will be exactly the same, identical, but what they'll do is they'll, they'll pull data from an EEPROM. So on, the, on this border here, there's an EEPROM, right? And they pull that data. So when the, when the system boots up, the operating system, so the serial number, the access count is actually on an EEPROM, and the processor pulls the EEPROM, and that's what tells it, you know, like in Mach 3, how many access you're licensed for. So they sell based on license, but even though the hardware is exactly the same. But what's weird is you can't even buy the licenses. If you wanted to upgrade from 3-axis to 6-axis, there's no way to do it. At least I haven't been able to find it. So I might try to hack the EEPROM, we'll see. Alright, so... Um, Alright, let's get this hooked up to Mach 3 and uh, get some tests on here. We'll see if I can get some movements going. Here's a closer look at the cable, the double ferrites. Uh, or they're called chokes, or also called chokes, ferrites. Um, yeah, you don't typically want to go past 3 feet normally on a USB cable. Um, just because you pick up weight, it's like an antenna. You pick up all the interference. Plus, it's not a really reliable signal for over length. It's, I mean, I would never go over six feet on a USB cable. Yeah, that's actually one of the reasons why the Ethernet is so much better. It's actually a much more stable uh, design, you know, IP over long distances, you know, over like, a, like 100 meters of cable. I'm actually a cabling contractor, so I set up fiber optic and wires all day long, build data centers. Um, all right, get this connected. With most of these USB versions of uh, these controller boards, I think I have like four different versions of the USB controller boards. Uh, they'll actually they'll run with just a USB connection. You don't typically need to have the external power unless you start driving motors and stuff, you know. But just controlling the processor and the basic communication between Mach 3 is usually enough. So that's my little test, my little Mach 3 uh, test bench there. So it's an HP uh, Core i5 and 16 gig RAM SSD drive M2. But it's actually dual booting uh, Linux CNC and also Mach 3. Windows 11. All right, looks like I got it working, just the basic communication going with it. Um, as you can see, so it's the ESV version here. So my other, my also my Ethernet version shows a different version. But the cool thing is it's licensed for six access. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm still waiting for my EC500, and once that comes in, I'm gonna be swapping it out. But I mean, this, I mean, we'll see how it works. I mean, even like these smaller, like, four-axis little red cards, they actually work pretty good on this smaller CNC. I haven't had a problem with it, so. Um, obviously, Ethernet is preferred, but, uh, you know, if you can get, like, a... I didn't really want to make a huge investment in, uh, you know, Mach 3 stuff, because I think eventually uh, I'll be going to Linux CNC or Acor Centroid Acoins or something different. Um, so I didn't want to have, like, $400 tied up in a Mach 3 card. So if you're wanting, right. like, there's different boards, they control them in different ways, but um, this one actually has a common 5 volt. So these two, two wires are leading 5 volt to the, to the driver, but it's a, it's a ground trigger. So the step and direction are being controlled by a uh, pole step, are being controlled by a ground trigger. Some is the opposite. Some you actually have a positive trigger and a ground, common ground. Alright, so uh, let me go back through. I'm only going to do one access, and uh, let me try that real fast. Alright, so I'm going to try the uh, x-axis, that's all I have, just to test it, and as you can see, it's moving. So, um, yeah, I want to make sure that I mock all this up now, because I don't want to be troubleshooting problems when it's in the cabinet, uh, where I'm actually, it's hard to reach. So I want to make sure everything's functioning correctly in Mach 3, then all I have to do down there is wiring, that's it. Okay, so out of the box, let's see what works and what doesn't work. I mean, I know this actually works. Um, I can I can see it moving the axis, but it's not picking this up. I had this working on the NVMe, so but the pinout might be slightly different. Um, so it's not picking up there. None of this stuff is actually working. Let's see if uh, e stop works. Uh, e stop doesn't work. Hmm. Yeah. So the only thing that's actually working is, is the actual wheel. Hmm. Spindle. 
Oh no, it's actually it's it's picking up now. In Mach 3, I just switched back to a different screen set. Okay, let's go into a different access. Under the actual plug-in config, there's an option here where it says NVMPG right there. Standard. I'm gonna try the standard and see what happens. Uh, like I said, they they could have different pinouts. Um, you know, so let me go back and mess with that. I figured that might happen, uh, just because I know the pinout for a standard MPG is different than this Novasen MPG. So the only thing, the functions, this this actually works, but none of the other stuff does. Um, so what I might just do is make an adapter DB15 to adapt them. And that way I don't have to cut into this cable, uh, just because I'm, I know I'm going to eventually go into a different board. This is only a temporary thing here. Um, so I don't really want to mess with the, you know, the jack up because this will plug into the other one, you know, exactly how it is and work. It's designed for this, this MPG. So I'm going to move on to the outputs. Spindle output and uh, inputs. Alright, so let me test the e-stop. So if you're not familiar with these uh, Bach 3 probes, the tool setters, there's, it's basically two end stops inside there. And one is the actual probe end stop, and there's also an over-travel end stop, which is I have connected e-stop. Because if it ever over travels, I want the spindle to come down and stop. So I have it connected to my e-stop, which is input one. And uh, let's go here. So right now, as you can see, it's not triggered. Then I'm just going to hit like that. Hope you can see that in the frame, maybe. Okay. There you go. So if the the uh, spindle bit or the uh, the uh, end mill came down and uh, it over traveled, so the, the the short stroke one is basically. Uh, it's the tool setter, and then the longer stroke, if it goes further down, hits the uh, end stop and it's the other set of pins. So the first end stop is the uh, probe, second is the e-stop. Alright, so I got that gone. Uh, output, so I gotta figure out the output spindle, and I run a coolant pump. So I actually run a coolant pump that goes to a. I have four salt state relays, and uh, two of the relays control the uh, spindle output. I don't actually have a pulse width modulated. Um, my, my spindle is just on and off. Uh, it's, it's not a three-phase okay, mode. So the hardest thing to figure out on these boards, these Nova Sun boards, was the output. Uh, this was definitely the... Uh, I mean, I had to look at the manual a few times. Because it's, it's an open collector, so you need this dedicated ground here. I have a ground going from the ground spot to the ground over here. And then my ground side, I have a little LED. This will be my sample uh, you know, spindle, coolant pump. It's just basically an LED here, you'll see. The positive side is being fed by my 24, 24 volt power supply right here. I don't have them all tied in together right there. So that, I'm supplying 24 volts, but then the ground side goes back to the output on one. So you need to supply the ground, then the ground side of your device needs to go on the output, and then you need to have a source voltage. So whatever the source voltage. So all you're doing is basically, when you activate this output, it's just basically grounding the signal. But if you don't have this ground, Connected to it, it's not going to ground anywhere. Um, okay, let's try this. Spindle on. See? Spindle on and light came on. Alright? Spindle off. Spindle on. Spindle off. There's a few second delay. Alright, so now I'm going to test the other outputs. I want to make sure those are active before I get under there. So, so as soon as I hooked it on, the power power came on, so it was already being grounded. So I had to go into Mach 3, port some pins, output signals, and go down to output output 2, or actually this is output 3, and make this active low reset. Okay, lights out. Now I'm going to hit the uh, right here, the coolant pump button right here on. Right? And light is on. Cool off, cool on, cool off, cool on. All right, so if you guys got this board on eBay or Amazon or, you know, like the documentation is not specific, um, but the output is the most complicated thing that I've seen so far. Uh, but that's how you do it, you know? Just You're basically just grounding out the device. So the outputs are actually grounds, but they only work if you have the ground signal here. So, yeah, I'm messing with Linux CNC. The cool thing is some guys mess with the firmware with that, but... Everything's working, so um, yeah. If you want to know more about this thing, uh, make future videos about my other CNC. So yeah, I mean I backlogged about 20 videos. 
I, I, I mean, I just don't have time to make these videos, so hopefully this will come up sometime soon. Alright, so here is my setup here. So I got it in there. That's the USB one. It's been a couple days. So I can't remember where I left off, but I want to show you this why this thing is a no-go for me at least. Everything works fine, except for a couple different things, like the end stop. And I've been troubleshooting with different USB cables, sticking there with interference. They both have ferrites on both, both ends. The computer's up there if you can't see it. But a couple things with these USB controllers I noticed. Anytime, even like the parallel port, right? The one that's powered by the USB. Um, every time I power it on, the USB provides 5 volts, right? And it activates, temporarily activates my, uh, my solid state relays. You know, they're basically tracks. And what happens is it turns on my spindle for one second and then it shuts off. It's actually worse with the parallel port one. But it only happens when you hook up the USB. So it's like somehow the 5 volt coming from the USB is triggering it. But this one actually only has USB. Um, but let me show you this weird issue with the home switches. Let me power it on. Alright. And then I got the power switch over here. Alright, so here. See that? Alright. Firing up. Oh yeah, if you're not, you, should, you saw my other video with the NV MPG. I created this cradle. I'll do another video about the cradle. So I'm doing some other parts for it too, like the the wiring. But all this stuff will be my thing first page. All right, let me show you this uh, setup here. All right, put it in the Windows. Okay, I'm not familiar with this. I'm, I'm you know 3D print all this stuff. All right, let's see if the keyboard. All right, let's fire at Mach 3. All right, it's no sun. 3B, watch. So, all the access work. Up, down, back, forth. Up and down. So, I actually, originally my home switches are here. I have an X home switch here. Uh, that's my Y home switch. Uh, I originally had them as like uh, end stops too, but I'll show you this weird glitching I'm getting. That's why I can't use this thing. So I temporarily hooked up one because I was trying to figure out if there's something wrong with my wires. Even though I'm running shielded wire, my reference you got Y axis, and you'll see it come in. Watch well, this. So, okay, it's coming in. So I'm gonna activate the. All right. But check this out. See that weird glitching thing, man? First, it's supposed to auto zero, which it's not doing. Um. You know, like I have it set to auto, uh, auto, like once you hum it, set that as a new uh, zero, machine zero. Um, but take a look at that. What is that glitch, man? I, I, this is the only controller board I've ever had it do that, you know? And I actually have a, a USB one over here. You know, this old, this little four port, the red card. And uh, I don't have any sort of sort of problems with that one, so I don't know. So I ordered a even though I do have an NVMe or NVEM the Ethernet version of this, I ordered a uh, EC300, um, only three axes though. So, but man, I'm having trouble getting one from the EC500 from China. Um, you know, everybody's out of stock of it, but I need five axes because I see there are five step motors in there. I want to mess with five axes, but. Um, but I do actually like I want to use a, I want better integration with this my MPG here I guess but plus this this thing I mean they, there's a firmware for, for Linux CNC and not with this one but the Ethernet version of it so um, yeah I guess I'll be taking this taking this out so yeah because I also my home is glitching I don't know what the deal with that is uh, and that's shielded wire too by the way it's not unshielded wire um, yeah different USB cables so I guess it's a no-go for me, I guess, you know, but I don't know if other people are having that same issue. I'm a, I haven't read anything about it, though, online, so I don't know what the deal is. Um, yeah, like, everything works except for that. Well, that and that weird thing, like, when the, when the spindle first, when you first turn it on, as soon as the USB gets powered, you know, it, it somehow leaks over to the, uh, the outputs, you know? So, not sure what the deal with that is. All right, guys. Well, that's my review of this thing.